What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Seth, from All In A Nintendo Podcast, doing something a little bit different this evening. Um, so, in the latest episode of All In, this is kind of a supplementary video to the latest episode of All In, because we ranked in our top five this past episode our top five favorite games in the Legend of Zelda series. And this all sort of started uh, when our buddies Andros and Micah from the Nintendo Pals, shout out to the Nintendo Pals, um, kind of did their own episode where they ranked the entire Zelda series. And in all end fashion, we took that to a, to a top five and had a really interesting conversation about it this week. But um, as promised, um, I am coming at you with a kind of supplement to that wherein I'm going to rank the entire series. Now, for those who don't know, who aren't familiar with me and have not heard me yell about the Zelda series before, uh, it's my favorite video game series of all time. It is very near and dear to my heart. I love it very, very much and care a great deal about Zelda. So, um, and, and something that I mentioned on the episode was that Zelda, I think, one of the things I love so much about it is that Zelda means something different to everybody. Um, everybody kind of comes in with different mindsets when it comes to Zelda games. Some people like things about other Zelda games that other people might not like and vice versa. So this is going to be interesting. This is all, of course, just my opinion. Um, this is going to be very difficult, <laughs> I can already tell you. Because I, I love, I mean, I said this on the episode, but I mean, I don't think that any of the mainline Zelda games are bad. Like, I don't think there's a flat-out bad game of the bunch. So, we're gonna see. Um, pardon me, I, I, I do have a bit of a cold, which I feel like I perpetually have because it has been uncharacteristically rainy here where I live. And um, I've just been very under the weather for like a month now. So you may, you may see me sipping on some tea throughout the course of this video. I also apologize about the layout. I was trying to find an attractive way to lay this out and things are gonna, as I put things in the tier box uh, here on Tier Maker, things are gonna shift around. So hopefully the end result looks acceptable. But um, if you've never seen anything like this, essentially I've got Tier Maker here with all of the mainline Zelda games currently released and it's ranked here from S tier to A tier to B, C, and finally D tier. So I'm going to rank each one of them. I have played all of these. I've even played to completion just about all of these. The only exceptions being uh, Triforce Heroes and... Actually, I think that's it. I think Triforce Heroes is the only one I actually have not completed. Uh, which is an underrated game. But anyway, we're going we're gonna to get into all of that. I'm going to rank these... And we're going to, uh, I'm going to kind of talk you through my process and, and we're, you know, and God bless us all. We'll, s we'll see how this turns out. Uh, so maybe the best way to start this, take a drink of tea here. Maybe the best way to start this is to start off with our S tiers and our D tiers. Like the, the top and the bottom so that we know what the parameters are. And I think that's going to be fairly easy to do. Uh, because even though it's the one that I haven't completed, I think I can pretty comfortably say that Triforce Heroes, while not a bad game, um, is, is a D-tier Zelda game. It is, in my opinion, the weakest of the mainline Zelda games. Uh, it, Triforce Heroes is a weird one, right? Because they tried to, like... The, the idea was basically, let's take the Link Between Worlds engine and let's make Four Swords again, basically. And that sounds like a formula that should have worked out pretty well for them. And it just kind of didn't, because I think a lot of people are not into forced cooperative experiences. Um, another game, Metroid Prime Federation Force, they kind of tried to do a similar thing. Didn't really work for them either. Both games, I think, better than people give them credit for if you play them the way they're intended, but even still, um, my cousin, my wife, and I tried to play Triforce Heroes, and it, it, you know, it's fine. It's good, it's fine, but it is a D-tier Zelda game. In terms of S-tiers, now, if you, and this is something I should say, too, uh, if you listened to the episode of All End, this is not, because we went, like, one through five versus tiers, 
this is not going to shake out exactly the same way, right? Like a, a numbered list is different from a tier list. I think that many of these games are going to wind up in the A tier. I think some are going to be in the B tier. Um, S tier, I feel like, should be fairly rarefied air. And so to start us off with the S tier, I mean, my, my favorite Zelda game is Majora's Mask. Um, I should also say that I will be considering the full scope of all of these games. So, and what I mean by that is when it comes to Majora's Mask, like I, I've told this story a few times on the show before, but when I played Majora's Mask as a, as a kid, I didn't like it at all. Um, I didn't like the three day cycle. I didn't really, you know, get a handle on the themology of it. I, it, it just didn't land with me when I was a kid. And I carried that with me for a long time. Like for a long time, Majora's Mask w wasn't even like something that I considered to be a good Zelda game, much less my favorite. And I revisited, uh, revisited the game as an adult when the 3DS remake came out, or remaster, I guess, came out. And I was just gobsmacked by it. Like I loved it. I didn't just like it, it floored me. And I, I just loved everything from the, I, and I guess really it, it was like looking at it with a fresh pair of adult eyes and understanding what they were going for design wise. Majora's Mask is like a titan of game design. Some of the best dungeons of the series, like some of the best music. I, I love all the individualized stories, the, you know, the world of Termina, like it, it is just a wonderful, wonderful game. And, um, and may, it's, it's up there. Like I, I always say, I, I have a hard time putting a definitive boom. This is my favorite game of all time, but mine may well be Majora's Mask. Like I, I love that game. And I, I like I said, I, I went on a journey with it too, which is not something I can really say about a lot of these Zelda games. I mean, I pretty much knew how I felt about most of these, uh, from the gem. Uh, another game that I think is S tier is Breath of the Wild. Uh, Breath of the Wild to me, uh, the NES, the, the first Legend of Zelda game on NES is a very special game to me. And I've talked about this before on the show too, but that was my first video game experience. I played my Uncle Aaron's copy of Legend of Zelda for NES when I was, I think, three, maybe four years old. And that is my earliest gaming memory. I, I think there might be a video of me fooling around on like a dragon's lair or something like that when I was maybe younger, but anyway... For all intents and purposes, that is my first video game. That's the first game that I really connected with, was the first Legend of Zelda. And um, so that is very special to me. And the reason I say that is because Breath of the Wild is the ultimate culmination of the ideas that that game put in place. Like, Breath of the Wild is what they wanted to make. It's what they had in their head, I feel like, when designing the original Legend of Zelda. And it's, it's a phenomenal game. You don't need me to tell you that Breath of the Wild's a great game, right? Uh, for me, an S-tier Zelda game. I have a couple of little minor issues with it, but overall, I mean, just unquestionably an S-tier Zelda game. Now, I... We'll, we'll return back to the concept of S-ranking as we move on, because there's one more that I think may be S-tier, but let's let's move on a little bit. Let's kind of go through the list here, because I think a great many of these will be A tier also. But uh, let's see what we have. So let's talk about the Four Swords games. Um, these games are interesting, because the first Four Swords, I enjoyed it, but it's a, it's a fairly limited experience. They've also got Four Swords Adventures listed here, which I think is the superior game, the GameCube game. I want to say four, the first Four Swords, which was really just like a pack-in with the, I think, Game Boy Color version of Link to the Past. And I think it had like four stages. It, it was a side mode, right? It was an experiment. Uh, four Swords Adventures was the like proper culmination of those ideas. So where, wherever those land... I do think that Adventures goes above Four Swords. And I wonder if... My, my big question here, I think, is I wonder if I would put that in, like... Does that mean that it's in another tier? 
Maybe it does. Although I don't know. Maybe I would say that Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures are C tier Zelda games. Not bad by any stretch. None of these games are bad. But maybe C tier. And, and by that logic, I may bump... I reserve the right to return to the first four swords and bump it down maybe into the dude here. But let's let's see where we where we wind up. Let's continue the list here. Uh, so let's look at Spirit Tracks and Phantom Hourglass, which I think is another big point of contention for a lot of people. Uh, I think Phantom Hourglass, I could feel pretty comfortable in putting in the D tier. I do like it more than Triforce Heroes, so I, I think that it goes above Triforce Heroes at least. But I, I do think that Phantom Hourglass is certainly one of the weaker Zelda games in the mainline series. Uh, there was a lot of hype for me going into that game because I love Wind Waker. And for those that don't know, Phantom Hourglass and its sequel, Spirit Tracks, are direct sequels to Wind Waker. And Phantom Hourglass had some good ideas, but it and, and I think that it did kind of lay out the canvas for how a Zelda game can work on the DS with its control scheme and, and stuff like that. And I, I think that the game should be um, uh, appreciated for that reason. But a lot of uh, a lot of missteps also in the design. Spirit Tracks is a much better game. I, I, I don't even think that Spirit Tracks is like perfect either. I think it has its own flaws, but it, it is certainly... Uh, th the gulf between Phantom Hourglass and Spirit Tracks I think is larger than between Four Swords and Four Swords Adventures. So while Phantom Hourglass is probably a D, Spirit Tracks is probably a C. And I think I would put Spirit Tracks before either Four Swords games. Because that's what I'll do too, is I'll, I'll put these um, even in within its tier, I'll order them as well. Uh, and things are, like I said, as I'm moving things, things are gonna shift around. So I do apologize about that, but hopefully it winds up looking okay. Now, hmm, what, what's, this is going to be a hard list thing to do, you guys. Uh, what's interesting about the Capcom Zelda games is I don't think that, I don't think that Oracle of Ages and Seasons are different enough. Those are different games, for those that don't know. They, they kind of tried to tap into the Pokemon thing, right? And they're actually, they're very good. Uh, but I don't think they're different enough to warrant... I prefer ages to seasons. But I don't know that they're different enough to warrant, like, one of them is in a higher tier than the other. I don't know if it's like that. I think they're both going in the same tier wherever they land. And I think that is going to be in the B tier. So let's throw ages... And seasons in the B tier. And another thing I should say, guys, is that for me personally, I definitely prefer, and, and I, I went back and forth with this for a long time because I love all Zelda. Like, I love 2D Zelda, I love 3D Zelda, but I definitely prefer, I think, 3D Zelda. So you'll notice that, and, and I'm sure this is going to become evident as I get further uh, into this uh, ranking that I think when you look at the S tier and the A tier and stuff like that, you're going to be seeing a lot of 3D Zelda. So, I, don't get me wrong, I love 2D Zelda also. Like, it's, it's apples and oranges. I don't want you guys to look at any of this as like, oh, Seth hates this game or that game. Because I, I really do like all of these for their own reasons. But uh, let's see what we have next. Hmm. <sighs> Let's deal with the Minish Cap, which is another of the Capcom Zelda games. Do I prefer Minish Cap to the Oracle games? Hmm. Minish Cap's a weird one. I have a lot of fondness for Minish Cap, and I think a lot of it comes from the art and I think a lot of it comes from the fact that it was on GBA, which is a very near and dear console to my heart. And that era of Nintendo is my favorite era of Nintendo. Like I, Min Minish Cap 
is in a good spot in terms of my personal life. Uh, however, I think the Oracle games have the better dungeons. I think in many ways the Oracle games are more interesting. I think the or Oracle games kind of do more interesting things just by their very nature than Minish Cap. But Minish Cap is a really good game. I just, it, it is tricky. Do I put it above the Oracle games? I should say too that, and, and this was probably evident in the list that we did on the episode, but I do try to divorce myself as much as I can from like legacy and like icon status and stuff like that because you'll notice like as I get further in and I, and I talk about some of this stuff, I, I'm not, you know, The Legend of Zelda is an iconic franchise and all of these games are good. But, like, I don't, uh... I, I try to look at these with some level of objectivism while acknowledging that I have nostalgia, and, and that is certainly a factor. But I do try to look at these critically, you know? And I do that because I love them, and my opinion of them... I'm sure I could make this exact same video tomorrow, and, and my ranking would probably be different. But... Let's... I think I'm going to give Minish Cap the edge. I think I'm going to give it the slight edge over the Oracle games. Uh, I think the Oracle games, in terms of their ideas, are stronger. I think their dungeons are probably stronger, and I think they're more interesting. But again, as objective as I'm trying to be, it is in some respects difficult for me to completely remove nostalgia glasses and completely divorce myself from it, right? So I I reserve the right to revisit this, but for now I think Minish Cap beats him. So, Zelda 1 and 2. Zelda 1 is for sure an A-tier game. That game, again, is very special to me. I've talked about my personal history with it. Um, even removed from all of that, I, I don't think it quite gets the S. Um, I think it's really good, even still today. Especially, I should have I should have had I'm woefully unprepared, but especially if you've got the Phil Summers hand-drawn game guide in front of you. Shout out to Phil, friend of the show. Uh, it, it's a very easy play, even today. Like it, it, His guide makes it very easy to fall back into that game. And the sense of exploration and discovery and, like, a, a lot of the things that were good about that game are still good today. And the... I don't know. I, I love the design of that game. That that game is a, is a master class in game design. Um, so it definitely gets the A. I don't think it quite gets the S. But I do think it gets the A. I feel, feel pretty good about that. Now, Zelda 2, on the other hand... I've got a certain fondness for Zelda 2. And maybe some of that, and I'm sure people can probably relate to this, but maybe some of that is the sort of like underdog story of it. Uh, the fact that Zelda 2 is certainly the strangest uh, like sequel probably of any of these. I mean, it's a completely different genre essentially from the original Legend of Zelda. It's so different. I mean, I didn't play Zelda 2 when it first came out. I could only imagine what it must have been like for folks. I, I mean, they must have gotten whiplash. It was so different, right? And that game's hard. Um, I have played through that game. And I was really I was really proud to, to get through it uh, with save states. <laughs> Let's not get crazy. Uh, but that game's difficult. And... I, I think the story of it is is fine. I, I think it, I think it did a lot of really interesting things in terms of its like world building and really making you felt like you were inhabiting the space. I, I think that Zelda Two does that better than the first game, and I think that it is slightly underrated. And I think that people uh, look down on it a lot because of the the effect that it had, how different it was, right? Because there's no game on, even on this list, 
that is like Zelda 2. I mean, that that's a side-scrolling action game. And it's hard, you know, so... <sighs> I have a fondness for it, uh, but I ultimately think... This is so hard, you guys. Try not to bump my mic too much. Um, I think I'm going to put it in the C tier. Yeah. I think I'm I think I'm going to put it in the C tier, but I think I'm going to put it at the front of the C tier. That that feels good. It would be like a C plus if if I had the option to do that. It it's like just barely doesn't get the the B. Yeah, I, I feel I feel okay about that. Um, what's really interesting about the remaining games we have here is that many of them to me are at minimum A tier. One of them may even be an S tier. Uh, I think I would feel pretty comfortable. Let's do this. Let's talk about A Link Between Worlds versus A Link to the Past. I love both of these games. Um, a Link to the Past blew my mind. I played that. Um, uh, that was the first game I played on Super Nintendo. Like, I had that in Mario World. And, I mean, what a, what a mind-blowing couple of games for a kid to play. Um, and... and it's a mind-blowing game, and and it was. I certainly have a ton of nostalgia for it. I think it's like a, a masterclass in pacing, and and Eric mentioned this in the episode, but like that game is so easy to pick up and play. And, and this is an opinion that I, that I've caught some flack for over the years, but I think that a link between worlds improved upon it. Um, and I think that the item rental system is one of the most ingenious pieces of design that they've ever implemented into a Zelda game. Excuse me. And the reason for that is the, the, just the, the level of freedom and sort of experimentation, like being able to really mess around with all the items in Ravio's shop, right? Like being able to, like being able to just kind of tackle the dungeons in the order that you want to. I, I, I think that lends itself really well, like as well paced and as well designed as A Link to the Past is. I think that it took bravery for them to go in that direction with A Link Between Worlds, especially since that game is such a spiritual successor to such a beloved game, right? So for, for them to sort of like take the training wheels off and and kind of like get in there and muck up the formula, so to speak, and to pull it off as well as they did, I, I think is super impressive about A Link Between Worlds. And I think the story of A Link Between Worlds is stronger. It's unquestionable that that game would not exist without A Link to the Past, right? I'm not arguing that. But... Um, I think that a lot of what is true about A Link to the Past is also true about A Link Between Worlds. And, and I think that A Link Between Worlds even slightly ekes out ahead of its predecessor in a lot of ways. So those are both, though, A-tier Zelda games, for sure. I don't think they quite get the S, but they're definitely A-tier. And as I've made clear, I, I do put A Link Between Worlds just barely ahead of a link to the past and that's something that i put on in the uh, in the top five list as well and that's another thing too when constructing like a top five list like i i didn't want to just have like those two back to back with each other you know that wouldn't have been interesting so again i, I don't want you guys to take this this ranking to mean like it should translate directly into my top five because it just doesn't work that way um but let's move on So, Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword. 
Skyward Sword is my least favorite 3D Zelda game. And I think that before the HD remaster that just came out came out, I think it would have been handily a C-tier Zelda game. But I think that the quality of life improvements that they made to that game with Skyward Sword HD elevates it so much. Like, it really is... Like, I'll never go back and play that original version of the game, you know? Um, and I think it actually is enough of an upgrade to bump it up to a B tier. Do I like it more than Minish Cap in the Oracle games? Again, this is a scenario where... <sighs> From the perspective of game design, and I, I I, think that Skyward Sword is a well-designed game. I think that the motion controls are actually really good, and more people should give them a chance. I think it has some of the best dungeons in the series. I think it does have the best story of any uh, 3D Zelda game. But I still... I still overall think that there are enough little head scratchers in there and, and the world just doesn't feel quite coherent enough for me that, that I still think I, I feel comfortable saying it's my least favorite 3D Zelda. That being said, it's still in the B tier and I, and I do think I would still put it above these ones. Um, not necessarily because I think that these are like not as well designed or whatever. But because again, I I favor 3D Zelda. It's you know, it's just a fact. I, I'm not gonna deny that. Twilight Princess. Um, this is a weird one for me because I think in a lot of ways, Twilight Princess is it's a weird game from Nintendo's perspective because it, it, it actually reminds me quite a bit of what they did with A Link Between Worlds in that Twilight Princess almost feels like a spiritual successor to Ocarina of Time. And it's the complete antithesis of the game that came before, Wind Waker, right? Twilight Princess is basically a make good on the promise of that Space World trailer that ended up becoming Wind Waker. And that's why, you know, everybody hated on Wind Waker when it came out. And there's now all this revisionist history and blah, blah, blah. But um, Twilight Princess represents a lot of really interesting, special things. I give it the edge over Skyward Sword. I do prefer it, but I don't know that it quite breaches into A-tier territory for me. This would be another scenario where I would give it like a B-plus if I could. But as it stands, I think it will uh, crown the top of the B-tier list. Uh, these remaining three games, Link's Awakening, Ocarina of Time, and Wind Waker, uh, none of those are any lower than an A tier. So, this will be difficult. Pretty much done with my tea. You'll see me drinking water here pretty soon. Um, let's deal with uh, Link's Awakening. <sighs> Do I like it as much as... A Link to the Past, no. But Link's Awakening was a mind-blowing game. Like, when that game came out, like, and I just had... Link's Awakening DX specifically, like, and I just had that world in my pocket, like, that was mind-blowing to me. Pokemon was awesome, don't get me wrong, but, like, that was actually mind-blowing that I had a Zelda game. A Zelda game world in my pocket. And I think the story is interesting. I think the layout of the world, I think it's like the perfect length, the, the perfect amount of stuff to do. I think the Switch remake was really good. Uh, but I don't think it gets the beat. I don't think it beats A Link to the Past, ultimately. And again, you'll, you'll notice like A Link to the Past wasn't on my top five, A Link Between Worlds was, but again, it would have been interesting for me to have those two things back to back on my top five list. But it does make sense for them to be back to back on my tier list. I hope I hope that makes sense. Um, 
Wind Waker and Ocarina of Time is the tricky one. This is probably going to be the single hardest decision here. Um, and I'm going to have to re... I'm already seeing some things I'm going to have to rearrange. Um, this is where the whole conversation really kind of like... Uh, came into full bloom, I suppose. Was Andros and Mike on Nintendo Pals reached out to the community at large, reached out to folks like us and the RetroLogic guys and, you know, Sean Capri and N64 Josh and stuff like that and, and asked for their opinions on this. Uh, Wind Waker versus Ocarina of Time. And I've sort of said my piece on it. I mean, I Ocarina of Time is iconic. No doubt about it, right? Um, you can't take that away from it. And I've got so much love for Ocarina of Time. Like, I really do. <sighs> I think that a lot of it is nostalgia. And I think that you can... I think Ocarina of Time still holds up, first of all. Uh, I think it still holds up well. And the 3DS remake was really good. Um, but Wind Waker, for me, is definitely the preferred game. I think that the combat of Wind Waker, like, the way that they closed in on the combat and made it so punchy and you get those musical stings as you land the hits. The uh, dungeons, I think, are categorically worse in Wind Waker than they are in Ocarina of Time. I think that Ocarina of Time also has the better music. But I, for one, loved exploring Wind Waker's world and the story of Wind Waker. And ultimately, I come to these Zelda games for an interesting world, an interesting story. Um, I, that's that's what I come to Zelda for. And I think that Wind Waker absolutely trounces Ocarina of Time in that regard. And that's, that's the big reason why I give it the beat. To, to say nothing of Wind Waker's art direction, which I love. Um, I don't think it's like a drubbing. I don't think it's like Wind Waker's a 10 and Ocarina's a seven or something like that let's not get crazy so the question i have for myself the dilemma i'm facing right now is is wind waker an s tier zelda game does it join the rarefied air of breath of the wild and majora's mask this is another situation where I almost wish there was like a half step tier. Like I wish I could give Ocarina the A+, but I think it will front line the A's, right? This is a similar situation. Ocarina of Time does not bust my top five because it represents a different thing. Uh, but I do think it is an A tier Zelda game at minimum. I mean, it's an amazing game. Now... Wind Waker's an S tier. We're going to put Wind Waker in the S tier. Everything just shifted, so it probably looks all weird now. I hope I hope it's all right. Uh, ordering here is going to change. Uh, for one thing, I think that NES Zelda needs to kind of back it up there. Let's kind of take a look at this. Let's... I, I feel pretty strong about it but let's kind of I mean let's let's reevaluate this before we etch it into the uh, the stone of time here S tier I feel strong about because we've got Majora's Mask which is maybe my favorite game ever Breath of the Wild which is I mean it's Breath of the Wild Wind Waker which I, I feel I feel strong about that being an S tier I really do I think, I think I'm happy with my S tier. Um, a tier I'm also pretty happy about. I'm debating on giving NES Zelda the slight beat. But I... I don't think so. That, that would be me just like giving in to my nostalgia at that point. Because Link's Awakening I do think is the better game in, in many, many ways. So yeah, I think... <sighs> I think I'm happy with my A's. Uh, B tier. 
I almost feel bad putting Twilight Princess in the B tier, but I mean, I, I just, I don't know that it is in the same air as these A tier games. You know, I think B tier is the, is the good place for it. Uh, ranking wise, I'm pretty, I'm pretty happy with it. Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword, Minish Cap, and then the Oracle games. I'm, 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 yeah, I, I can be happy with that. The Seas, we've got Zelda 2, Spirit Tracks, Four Swords Adventures, and then the first Four Swords. Again, it's a weird one because I don't think that they're different enough to be tier like differences. So I, I, I think I'm happy with that as well. And then for the D tier to be Phantom Hourglass and Triforce Heroes, I think I'm I'm also happy with. So I I think this might be it. I think this might I think I'm happy with this tier list. It's divo it's like Sophie's choice, you guys. Like it's it's tough, but I'm just gonna kind of quickly look over it uh, one more time just for my own edification and see if I want to change anything here at the zero hour. Um, no. No, I think this is it. So, one last time, let's go through it. My S-tier Zelda games are Majora's Mask, Breath of the Wild, and Wind Waker. My A-tier Zelda games are Ocarina of Time, A Link Between Worlds, A Link to the Past, Link's Awakening, and The Legend of Zelda, the first one. My B-tier games are Twilight Princess, even saying that feels weird, but uh, Skyward Sword. Again, taking into account all of the upgrades and stuff with the HD version. Minish Cap and the two Oracle games leading with Ages, because that is my preferred one. My C -tier, C tier games are Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, Spirit Tracks, Four Swords Adventures, and Four Swords. My D tier games are Phantom Hourglass and Triforce Heroes. I, I feel good about this. I think we're going to go with this. So uh, I'll include a link to this uh, this tier maker uh, if you guys want to make a tier list of your own and uh, send it to us on Twitter. We're on Facebook and Twitter at All End Podcast. Uh, definitely uh, give us a subscribe here on YouTube if you want to see more videos like this. I'm always making videos where Eric and I both are. Um, he makes Gamer Glossary. I make Keep Nintendo Weird. And I make like weird little supplementary videos like this as much as I can. So uh, definitely give us the sub. And uh, yeah, check out the podcasts between Keep Nintendo Weird and the main show, All In. And um, I guess that's it. I guess that's my Zelda tier list. I... I <laughs> I know I'm, I'm very self-serious about it. I just love this series so much. And and I think that... And I'll just close by saying that that I think that it's really special that... Um, that Zelda can mean so many different things to so many different people. That Zelda can represent something different for me than it would for you. you you're probably going to completely disagree with this list. You're going to flame me in the comments. How dare you say that A Link Between Worlds is better than A Link to the Past. How dare you not put Ocarina of Time in the S tier. Um, so that's fair, but this is just my opinion. So, you know, like I said, make a tier list of your own, join the conversation, uh, link up with us in discord and talk to me about it. Uh, you'll find links to all that stuff in the episode description. So anyway, I'm rambling until next time, guys. Bye.